Let's have some fun with smart home product leaks. I mean, we're all kind of stuck at home, so we might as well be imagining our future self-isolation selves. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by telling you about some futuristic stuff that is, some of it is coming very recently or very soon and some of it is going to take a very long time but all of it I think is pretty fun. The Apple Watch 6 appears poised to come out in late 2020 but it also appears to be getting some features that we've all kind of expected from this series. Blood oxygen level support should be there, a sleep monitoring function that is embedded inside the new Apple Watch, as well as some kids-based features. So there's actually talk of a kids mode capability being there and that would change the activity rings. This looks all to be part and parcel to iOS 14 and watch OS 7. Now the other thing that is maybe the unexpected leak is Touch ID, so a fingerprint scanner on the Apple Watch 6. The new Apple iPad Pro hit the market really, really hard with its new features, its new capability for interface with a trackpad or with mice. Now, in general, I would say those were the features everyone was talking about, but there's this little hidden feature that was uncovered after a teardown, which is that it has LiDAR capability. And everyone's pointing to this as a future state of AR and VR, and that is absolutely true. I think Apple's totally narrowing down on that, and you'll hear that as we go here. But what I also see is the home kit and the home control capabilities getting firmed up by this LiDAR. Apple TV looks like like it's going to get a new generation set top box this year and it looks like there'll be a 64 and a 128 gigabyte model as well as a bunch of changes to the interface it sounds like the storage space is really there for apple arcade to be focused on more apple tv plus getting a new interface with this new set top box i'm sure it'll go back a few generations as per usual with apple but then on top of that another kids mode is expected as part of that. The Apple HomePod 2 appears to be slated for a release in 2020 as well, but some of the patents that Apple have filed in the last year or so are very interesting. And one of the things that I think is the most interesting about this is that it looks like it will have embedded control within the cloth fabric and the cloth fabric will be able to light up. So it's looking like you will essentially have buttons directly on that cloth fabric. Now, it would have to be a different type of fabric or a slightly different type of fabric. So obviously people are going to worry about how that's going to wear and tear over time. But what also looks to be a part of this is IR based control, both accepting, so receiving communication through IR, and then also transmitting and controlling other IR devices, which would make sense from what we've seen with the Galaxy Home Mini already out with that IR control capability. Apple has been working on smart glasses and a smart AR slash VR headset for a long time. And they're slated for release of those right now, kind of inside of their company, 2022, 2023. That looks to be the timeline. So the headset first, which would be more or less connected to what I'm going to describe as the HomePod 3, and then the glasses to come out separately in 2023. So they're already working on all of these products. So when you look at all of this, this is what I was talking about with Apple. I mean, to me, they look to be in a spot to really create a lot of products that have the ability to sense different things in your smart home and then as well give you information back on those and control your smart home as well so i think they're making a major play here in a lot of different ways with a lot of really great sensor and communication technology so i what i what i keep seeing out of apple is the application of the right technologies in the right place and i'm really impressed right now. Now, the pricing model is what remains to be seen, so we'll wait on all of that. Speaking of glasses, though, or smart glasses, Facebook has continued development of their AR and VR platforms. We all know that they have the Oculus out there, but they're also right now narrowing down on a manufacturer of displays or glass for their AR and VR systems. Now, they believe that social media, social networks need to 
to have this basically on the fly in a glass form and probably on a lot of other surfaces. Now, the the vendor that they have partnered with is UK based and they've actually blocked other companies from being able to use this vendor as well. So they clearly believe this is a very important technology based on micro LED and also doesn't require backlighting. The materials being used are intended to be a larger size for a more affordable price point. And that's what I mean. They're probably talking about other surfaces as well, not just smart glasses. Now, they are still a few years away from deploying anything in terms of a marketing product, but they are narrowing down on this platform. Not so much a leak anymore, but the Wise Band and the Wise Scale have both come out. Now, the Wise Band at $25 US and the Wise Scale at $20 are available on the early access. Obviously, the Wise Scale is pretty self-explanatory, a lot like other scales that you've seen in terms of your smart home, but the Wise Band is definitely the more interesting product as far as I'm concerned. Speaking of fitness bands, it appears that Fitbit Charge 4 is going to come out later this year for around 150 euros or $150 US. That looks to be the price point, but the big upgrade is really a GPS module that is no longer reliant on your smartphone phone. Now that would significantly reduce battery life if that was turned on and we're talking about five hours of continued use with that GPS module but still a number of days when you turn that off. So it's more intended to go with you on a run or a bike or something like that. One thing to keep in mind here this is not Google's big stamp on the Fitbit brand. They really are just letting products that were already in the product pipeline come out and I think we'll see changes to this brand much more over time. Now speaking about Google, the Pixel 4a is almost entirely leaked at this point and should be coming out very soon. I think we're still going to see that announcement around what was originally the Google I.O. time frame. But the biggest change to that device is essentially the fact that there won't be an XL size. The Pixel 5 is being leaked as well. This is pretty normal for Google's phones here. But what looks to be really different is the camera design on the back. It appears to have a telephoto lens as well as well as this strange shape to it but it appears to me like Google is trying to hit more of a mid-range phone based on the specification so I don't think you're going to consider the Pixel 5 to be a flagship and we haven't heard anything else kind of behind this that would suggest that Google's really working on that next level that top level uh, phone to fight with the S20 and the Note 20 and Apple iPhone 12. Another leak that appears to have come out of Google is the Google Nest Hub appears to be about to get a very small hardware upgrade. So a new version of that device. It is expected that it will get a new AI ready processor. So this will be a slight increase in terms of those hardware specifications and something that hasn't been leaked but is my expectation is that a camera will show up on the new version of the Google Nest Hub. On top of that it appears Google is ready or poised to release a new device in 2020 that will essentially be an Nvidia Shield or Chromecast Ultra hybrid where they're going to bring together their Android TV platform onto their streaming devices. So this will be their own version of an Android TV box. We have yet to see what the physical designs look like but I think it's very important for the whole Google platform and for Android TV in general to have a device of this nature. A leak from inside of Amazon actually suggests that Prime Day is still planned to go ahead kind of mid-July and this is a little surprising to me and I don't think we've seen the end of this because of this whole pandemic, this whole outbreak going on. I mean we're seeing people starting to walk out of Amazon and, and out of Whole Foods or at least there's news reports of that at this point. And we've also seen Amazon offering additional incentives or additional money to people to continue to work in their facilities. So we'll see if Prime Day goes ahead, but right now Amazon says full steam ahead. Speaking of Amazon, Ring has leaked details around a new door box, which appears to be a key holder or a smart key holder that would allow integration with Amazon Key for just about anybody. 
somebody who wanted to allow someone to drop off a package. Amazon has released the Blink Mini for pre-order. This is a $35 plug-in smart security camera, day and night HD video, two-way audio and motion detection, as with the other Blink smart home cameras. Sonoff also looks poised to release a Zigbee Wi-Fi bridge along with a number of sensors. So a wireless switch sensor, temperature and humidity, a motion sensor, and an entry or a contact sensor. Sony has a new version that is rumored or has been leaked here, the fourth generation of their WH-1000XM headset. So these are the Bluetooth headsets. And in the past, they have been very well received for great audio quality, Pretty good battery life, not the best in the industry, but they also have had the ability for interaction with the Google Assistant and with Amazon's Voice Assistant. Now, there's a new chipset out there by Qualcomm that is going into a lot of these headsets, and that chipset is enabling up to four times, or even more in some cases, in terms of battery life. And this is because of the introduction of things like Bluetooth 5 or Bluetooth Low Power, and it's also allowing these vendors who have now access to so much more battery life to add in additional features. So what we're hearing with Sony's ver version four of these headsets is actually that it will have the ability to listen for the wake word from both Amazon and Google Voice Assistant. Samsung's Galaxy Note 20 here looks to be an incredible smartphone. Some of the specifications that are coming out are putting it easily at the top of the industry. I mean, they already kind of were there with the S20 Ultra and people are getting really excited about this phone. Now it's too early for me to tell you whether or not any of this is accurate, but what I am hearing and what I do think is clear is that Samsung is pushing hard for an earlier release into July of the Note 20 instead of into August like they do most years. We have to go back to Apple for a moment with the iPhone 12. Now it looks like this entire range and it looks like we'll have three different versions of the iPhone 12 as well as an iPhone 9 that might be out by the time I release this video. Now the iPhone 12 appears to be poised for a big set of changes from the iPhone 11, which was already a pretty significant change. The one thing that isn't quite sorted out in the tech community yet is whether or not Apple is going with a new face lock, uh, I ID or identification technology with the camera embedded under the screen or whether they're going with an embedded fingerprint scanner under the screen. This doesn't seem to be sorted out yet, but what is sorted out is 5G should be present, a new and a pretty significant update to the wireless or the Wi-Fi specification. And it looks like LiDAR is showing up on the iPhone 12 series of phones as well. I hope you've enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun to put together and I really think that some of these leaks will be very interesting in terms of the products that they create and the ripples in the rest of the industry. Now when I went to CES this year I showed you guys a number of different technologies and a lot of things that haven't been talked about outside of CES. So go watch those two videos that are up on screen right now. They are fantastic views into the future of smart home and technology. Otherwise guys Thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.